So that's kind of nice, right? But of course, all of you are like, well, not all of you, but a lot of you are kind of like, when I wrote this down, what on earth made me think of writing that down? Okay, now I actually dropped the clue a few times. I just tried to gloss over it so you didn't notice me paying too much attention to it. I said a great idea would be to visualize what is going on. I said, write something, draw something. I'm gonna draw something, okay? I said, if algebra were off limits, how could I represent this thing? I love, Raf said this to me before, he said, how could I represent squares, numbers <laughs> squared <laughs> in a visual way? Perhaps I could use a square, okay? So I'm gonna take this line, I'm gonna take this line as my cube, okay? So this is saying that there's a square and it's one by one, one by one, right? And its side length is a plus b plus c because a plus b plus c is one. Okay. Now, I can't draw every single combination of A and B and C. Obviously, that would be a million, an infinite number of diagrams. All I need to do is draw a diagram where the concept, the principle is there. So, for instance, if I make like A this length over here, and then make B something like that. Okay, there you go. A is bigger than B, is bigger than C, they're all positive. Now, of course, this is not just A and B and C, this is a square. So, I need, um, I need A here as well, and something like this, there's B and there's C. Okay. Now, remember I said to you, there's a nice easy way to remember, not that you need to, but that A plus B plus C all square is this, okay? Well, if this is what I'm squaring here, then each of these corresponds to a little slice of this, okay? It's a slice. For instance, where is the A squared slice? It's there in the top left corner, you can see it, can't you? Okay, uh, I'm gonna draw it all the way down, actually. There you go, there's A squared. Where's the B squared slice? No. It's just a bit further in, right? If I go like that, there's the b squared slice. In, in fact, I'm going to label these a squared and b squared. Are you okay with that? And where's the c squared slice? I've already drawn it, haven't I? There's c squared. Okay. Now the question becomes, how did I know to make this argument? Okay. Well, I'm saying that this whole thing should be less than 1, right? And this thing is equal to 1. So that means I ought to be able to fit all of these somewhere inside. And if it's less than the whole area, I should have some gaps left over. I should have some gaps. Okay. All right, let's, let's fit them in. A squared, B squared, and C squared. We've already picked them out. So what's left for me to place into the diagram? There's, there's two B squared, which I haven't accounted for, and four C squared, that I also haven't accounted for. Look at this line. Look at this line. Can you see visually where that algebraic line fits in? Yeah. I think it fits in here. Do you see it? Here's, here's another B squared. I have to be able to fit a B squared in there. I have to be able to. Because look, I've got the width, that's correct. And I know that this is A, which is bigger than B, right? So look, there's, um, there's leftover space, and there's gonna be leftover space. Here, okay? There are my B squareds, they're done. Where am I gonna fit in my C squareds? Ah, okay, so I've got some space. I've got one, two, three, four. They have to fit in there, don't they? They have to, because what's the, what's the height here? Well, it's C. What's the width? It's B, which must be bigger than C, right? So here's another C squared and another C squared. I don't know if I can fit two C squareds in there. I don't, I don't actually know that because I don't know what B and C actually are. I might be able to or I might not, which was some of the problems that I spotted. Some people knew they could draw something, but it's like, yeah, you've got to be careful where you fit things. You have to be able to generalize. I know I can fit C squared here because of this line. Do you see it? Do you see it? C is less than A. So that's, that's this rectangle over here is AC. Do you see that? AC. So there's a C squared there, there's a C squared there. And again, I have, um, Gaps, lots and lots of them. Wait, so can that actually be a working out? Okay, so what I would do, what I would do, in fact, not what I would do, what I did do, right, is I would say, okay, okay, I look, I look, and I say, is there some visual way to understand what's going on here, okay? And frequently there are squares. Squares are nice to play with because they give you areas, and areas have to be positive. Right? That's another way of saying if you always, if you square a real number, you'll always get something zero or bigger, okay? So if you've got squares in there, that makes it sort of cannon fodder for doing a diagram, right? And then I drew this thing, 
And then I said, okay, well, how, how do I turn this into algebra? So I drew this first. This is not my proof. In the same way the diagram for a circle geometry question is not your proof. It's what helps you work out, what do I even write? That's, that's how I knew to write this, because I was like, how do I say that, that, that there's a gap there? And the answer is because of that. Does that make sense? So whenever you encounter uh, um, any kind of inequality, right? If you've got something which you're like, oh, could I draw it? Could I draw it? Just think of using that as a guide to sort of not just algebra out in random directions, right? It's a pretty small number of lines, right? But you wouldn't guess it until you have this, okay?